Well, welcome to this extra update video. Fairly brief, remarkably good news. Now, the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine has been in phase three trials now since the end of July. So far, they've given two doses of the vaccine to 141,135 people. Half of those went into the vaccination group, half of those are in the placebo group. Of that 41,135 people, 170 of them have caught the COVID-19 SARS coronavirus 2. 10 of those have been quite poorly with severe cases. So 170 people have caught it, 10 are severe. The question is, were they in the control group or were they in the placebo group? And here's the results. Just amazing. In the placebo group, there was 162 infections and nine severe cases. They got salty water. How does that compare with the group that got the vaccines? Well, there was eight infections in that group and one severe case. This works out at 95% effectiveness. This is a completely stunning result. Way more infections, way more severe cases, way fewer infections, way fewer severe cases. The vaccine group doing so much better than the placebo group. And as well as that, the two month safety data is good. So we have to wait for two months after the final injection has been given and uh, to see what side effects there are. And that is good as well. Therefore, this will receive approval. I am virtually certain now from the FDA and from the uh, authorising agencies in the UK, European Union and around the world. That, that's the bottom line. If you want to switch this video off now, do. Um, this is just brilliant news of uh, immunity from this vaccine. But of course, um, most of you being interested will want to stick around just for another five or ten minutes. Um, it's important to know where this data comes from. We always have to trace it back to source. This is not double blind peer reviewed science yet. I believe it will be. It's being submitted for peer review uh, shortly and I'm, I'm, I'm quite convinced that that will pass. But so far, this is what we have. It's a press release. Uh, this and one a slightly more detailed one from Pfizer. So this is literally uh, a flick through there because that's, <coughs> that's all of it. That, that's the lot. That's what we know. So all the news reports you see from around the world are all based on that. Um, so this is my interpretation of what that says. Let's get on with that now. Um, so it's the Pfizer BioNTech vaccine, the um, messenger RNA vaccine, of course. That's the review I've just looked at. There's a slightly more detailed one there, but it doesn't actually say much more. Both press releases from the, from the company. So, um, phase three study of the COVID-19 vaccine candidate meeting all primary efficacy. In other words, efficacy means it works. Uh, Endpoints. Um, published on the 18th of November uh, at uh, 7 o'clock in the morning. That's US time, I would think. I only heard about it this afternoon. Phase three study only started on the 27th of July. This has gone quickly. They developed the vaccine quickly. It's being tested quickly. This is impressively fast. But although fast has met all of the requirements as far as I'm able to judge at the moment, fast but remarkably efficient. It's impressive. Um, primary efficacy analysis, 95% effective not bad at all. And when I say not bad, what I mean is absolutely staggeringly brilliant. This is just so much better than we had hoped for. It really is quite amazing and it gets more impressive in a minute. Um, the probability that the result arose by chance is one in 10,000. So this is 999, so 9,999 out of 10,000 likely, <coughs> excuse me, likely to be an accurate result. That's the p-value there. So remarkably good quality data. Direct quote from the company, high rate of protection against COVID-19 can be achieved very fast after the first 30 microgram dose. So they're saying here that this is giving a high rate of protection after one dose. Now the protocol of course is to give two, one, in, one now and one in three weeks time, but interesting they're saying that. Um, so they began to look at this data uh, 28 days after the first dose, <clears throat> which is seven days after the second dose. So that's when this data was taken from. That's when they get the 95% efficacy from. 
170 firm cases, 10 of those cases were severe. Total number of people in the study, 41,135. 42% of global participants and 30% of US participants are from a wide diversity of uh, ethnicities. So that's good. So this is working in all people backgrounds. 41% of global and 45% of US participants over the age of uh, 50 are on the age 56 to 85. So plenty of older age group, middle aged older age group as well. As we've said, the staggering news, placebo group 162 infections, nine of those severe. About the sort of percentage of severe infections we would expect generally. Um, but in the vaccine group, <clears throat> eight people got infections, only one of those was severe. This is really very, uh, very impressive. Efficacy was consistent across age, uh, age, gender, race and ethnicity and demographics. This is really quite amazing. And observed efficiency in adults over the age of 65 was 94%. I mean, this is just absolutely amazing. The efficiency of the immune system goes down with time. Um, flu vaccine, for example, didn't work very well in older people. They had to put adjuncts in it to get it working. <clears throat> but this is, this is just quite incredible. 94% efficiency basically the same as in younger people over the age of 65. So 95% overall, 94% efficacy in over 65s. This really is a complete game changer from this vaccine. Very impressive. Now the two month safety data is also checking out. We have to wait the two months, of course, in case there's delayed side effects, rightly so. Um, safety dome milestone required by US FDA for emergency use authorization has been achieved. So that's what we've been waiting for. Basically, we were just waiting for, well, getting more numbers in, of course, the numbers are better. I think last time they only reported on 95 cases, now they've got 170. <clears throat> but um, as well as that, waited for two months for the safety data, and it's good. Now, side effects, worth noting what they are. Um, FDA adverse effects rules. Now, I'm gonna show you these rules in a minute. Uh, well tolerated uh, across all populations. Uh, no serious concerns observed, so <coughs> no one got very sick. Most of, most people who got side effects, the people that got side effects, less than 2%. Now, what they call grade three side effects, 3.8% of people got fatigue, 2% got headaches. Now, it's worth looking at what these side effects are. So let's just look at that now. Sorry, there we are. So th these are the gradings of uh, side effects. So th these are local reactions. Um, these, th this is from the uh, FDA approval document. Uh, there are other things that weren't reported. So what they reported, the, on the only ones they reported were fatigue 3.8% uh, at level three. So that significant prevents daily activities. But we're not told for how long, but we assume it's for a fairly short period of time because it's past the, the, the test. And the headache has been significant. Uh, use of strong pain relief or prevents daily activities in 2%. But again, we're not told how long that uh, lasted for. Um, it would be assumed uh, not long at all. So if you get this vaccine, it looks like you've got a 3.8% chance of getting Fatigue, which interrupts their daily activities. 2% chance of getting a headache, which requires some decent painkillers or stops you from working for, a, presumably for a day or so. We don't know the time span. Um, that is, again, pretty uh, impressive. Um, and I'm sure that will, pretty sure that will pass approval. Um, it's, it's, re it's relatively low. And for, for the vast majority, it's less than 2% getting side effects. Plan to submit uh, within days for the FDA and European Union and the plan on sharing data, data with all regulatory agencies around the world. So the data here is going to be open to all these regulatory uh, agencies. So the next question is how soon can we get it? Because um, I think it would be a good idea to increase herd immunity and 
protect individuals. This is just completely game changing, isn't it? They expect to produce uh, 50 million vaccine doses in 2020, so that will be enough for 25 million people. 1.3 billion doses by the end of 2021. Uh, Pfizer is confident its vast experience, expertise, and existing cold chain infrastructure. Right. So this is this is this is just a direct statement from the company mouthing off a bit, but it's also saying that. Um, even though this vaccine does need to be transported very cold, they're confident they have the infrastructure to do that. Now, the reason I'm confident they have the infrastructure to do that is because this has been done for Ebola in sub-Saharan Africa, where it's pretty hot and the conditions in supporting technologies are often relatively poor. But specialised containers using dry ice technology, which is solid carbon dioxide, have been used and are effective and have worked with Ebola. So if it can work with Ebola in Africa, in advanced countries like the United States, Europe and uh, the United Kingdom, it can certainly be made to work. So I'm sure that can work. What they don't say is how long you can take it out of these concord conditions and leave it before you use it. We're not told that yet, but they do seem confident that this is going to be possible. And uh, I'm sure this uh, logistics is not um, beyond their ability to work out. Uh, manufacturing, uh, Germany, Belgium and three US sites at the moment. Uh, logistics, as we've said, specially designed temperature controlled thermal shippers utilising uh, dry, uh, dry ice, which is solid carbon dioxide to maintain a temperature at minus 70 degrees centigrade. Well, I've forgotten what that is in Fahrenheit. It's about minus 60 or something um, in that kind of area. So this is very cold, way below freezer temperatures. Of course, the big advantage of the Moderna vaccine is it can be transported at freezer, freezer temperatures, minus 20 degrees centigrade, ordinary freezers, and kept for some time in ordinary refrigerators. Now, how long this can be kept once it's removed from the minus 70 for the case of the Pfizer-BioNTech vaccine? We're, we're not told. We don't know. Um, so no point speculating. It's not on the press release that I can see. Uh, wrong screen again. Well done. Back to this. Um, they can be used as a temporary storage unit for 15 days by refilling with dry ice. In other words, you can be away from mainstream freezer infrastructure for 15 days um, without plugging into the electricity, basically, which is impressive. If you live in the UK, you want to know how many we're getting. Uh, we've, all, we've, get, we've got dabs on uh, 40 million doses. 10 million by the end of the year. Uh, but bear in mind this is as well as uh, the Moderna vaccine. Um, now the Moderna vaccine, we haven't got the safety data yet. Given that it works in a very similar way to this vaccine, albeit with a different lipid capsule in which the RNA vaccine is contained, um, the, 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 the rumblings on that are good so far though. So I am expecting um, that, that to be approved in terms of safety as well. That's what we're waiting for. For the Pfizer, we've now got the safety and the uh, increased numbers, in, actually increasing the efficacy. Last week, we were saying the Pfizer vaccine was 90% effective. This has actually improved it, which is brilliant. And we're expecting numbers really soon on the Oxford AstraZeneca vaccine. And I uh, just really hope that one comes out because it's a lot cheaper th than these specific RNA vaccines. So um, just wanted to bring that to you. Incredibly good news. Let's just leave with the, the bottom line. That's, that's the efficacy data. Um, it's, it's impressive. Uh, and the fact that this RNA vaccine has worked so well for this, really, I think, I think it means that, that, that humankind has discovered a, a completely novel sort of approach to biotechnology that can be utilised for treating other, maybe for other vaccines and possibly for treating uh, quite a few types of cancer as well. So basically this is, this is a big step forward that we suspected last week. It's now been confirmed, looking good, looking safe with an acceptable side effect profile. Meaning that we can all get back to normal, but not yet, not, not yet. We've got this winter to get through yet, don't forget that. So don't let your guard down, keep going, but um, 
I believe that vaccine technology really has, has come to come to our rescue in the, in this um, in this pandemic, just as antibiotics came to our rescue with uh, bubonic plague, and vaccines came to our rescue with smallpox and other previous pandemic diseases. Uh, we're just waiting for polio to be eradicated as well in the next year or two, hopefully. So um, some good news, but uh, stay humble. Keep doing all the basic things for now, but uh, ha have, have really significant hope from this. Okay, thank you for watching as always.